Welcome to Branching Out with FNM Bank. I'm your host, Mary Pavlovskaya, and today I'm joined by Courtney Thompson, President and CEO of the Greater Augusta Chamber of Commerce. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure, thanks for having us today. So I am with the Greater Augusta Regional Chamber of Commerce. We are here serving the business community in Stanton, Waynesboro, and Augusta County. So exciting, and I know you guys are doing a lot of great work, especially with a lot of businesses during the pandemic. So tell me a little bit about what that's been like. It's been interesting. Um, it's obviously been a very unusual year for everyone. I think we all can agree on that. Um, it's been a good time for us to really be able to stretch our wings and help our businesses, um, help people find solutions, find resources, connect them to things that they need. Just listen to them. You know, we've had so many business owners concerned about things that you know, they have never had to think about before. So we've really been able to come in and um, educate them, connect them with uh, resources, with local legislators, um, and just really try and be there for them as they're struggling through something that nobody has had to deal with ever. <laughs> You're absolutely correct. And I've noticed that the chamber has probably had to pivot themselves. Not only did restaurants and local business owners have to deal with something they've never dealt with, mm -hmm. but I know that you as the chamber had to go completely virtually. Tell me yes. what that was like. <laughs> Big time. So we are typically known for our networking events. You know, we love yes. to get together. We're a bunch of extroverts and we enjoy getting out and seeing each other and them. doing business <laughs> and you know, networking together. So we did have to very quickly figure out how to still serve our members. We couldn't just shut the doors and say, well, we're in a pandemic, we can't do anything. Um, so we did all of our major networking events went virtual. Um, we did a whole host of webinars um, that were different resources, educational topics mm -hmm. and things for our members that they needed during this time. And we've really been proud of the way that we've been able to offer virtual things um, over the last few months so that we could still serve our members and reach out and keep them connected. Um, and now that things are starting to get back to normal, it has been really nice to get back in to see some people in person, having some in-person events. Hopefully that will be able to continue. Uh, people are excited to get back out and see each other and do some networking and just kind of see what the business environment is like right now. But it's definitely been a change, but we're really proud of how um, we've been able to maintain um, all of what we're doing over the last few months. Yeah, I know that's great. And I'd love to get into that potentially in our next video, but I'm really curious about something you've mentioned on, which was everything going virtual. Mm -hmm. And I know that we are not the only business that had to accommodate our employees going home and working from home, um, but that has created such a great issue with lag within our bandwidth yes. and in this area specifically. So I know you've been in touch with a lot of the issues that businesses and local community members have been seeing. So if you could touch a little bit on that, that'd be great. Sure. So internet access in this issue has been a topic of conversation for the last few years. And um, we've known that there are huge pockets of especially Augusta County, but even within the cities of Staten and Waynesboro that aren't well served um, with internet. So either they don't have it at all in a lot of areas in the county, or it's too expensive for the families to be able to afford it, or it's just not um, sufficient for what they need. So we kind of knew this, and it's been a topic over the last few years, but now, since there are kids trying to do education online, people trying to do telemedicine appointments, I mean, healthcare has been huge, obviously, the last few months, um, mental health check-ins, where they're trying to still see counselors, like you mentioned, employees working from home, you know, still keeping on with business, yeah. but still trying to do that from home. So it's really come to the forefront. Um, even though we knew it was an issue, it's really become a big deal because a lot more people are having to use it and realizing that what they have is not sufficient. Um, so this has been an issue that we had already been talking about, but it definitely got bumped to the top of the priority list um, for the chamber at least. And a lot of our local legislators, a lot of our businesses, um, obviously the hospital mm -hmm. wants to see you know, excellent um, internet coverage all over the county so that they can continue to serve all of their patients well. Definitely, definitely. It sounds like there's some strides being made into, our, into improving it. So what exactly can we as a community do to help that process along? Is there, is there anything out there that can push for better networking or better bandwidth in our area? There is, and really at this point, it's just people you know, using their voices. So letting our local legislators know. They know that it's an issue, but if they're hearing from us, then that's something they can take to Richmond and to Washington and let them know that that's important to us. Um, the Chamber's Voice of Business Committee has actually taken this on as their top issue um, for the rest of 2020 and into 2021. Um, so we're working on some ideas and some ways to actually make things happen. So we know what the problem is, now we need the solution. So that's what we're working with now are some of our local internet providers who can bring us that solution 
um, and they're telling us, you know, what it will take. So what can we do to actually make those things happen and provide good internet access, sufficient internet access um, that's affordable for everyone across our area. Um, so we're actually going to be putting out a survey pretty soon um, that will go out to all residents of Augusta County, Stanton and Waynesboro that we want as many people as possible to take because the more information we have, the more data we have, the more solid numbers that we have, uh, the more attention we can put to this issue. So we're really hoping that that's going to make a difference and we can start to see some improvements and some actual solutions happening for this area. That would be great. I know that would definitely change a lot of school life, yes. especially with everything going virtual <laughs> yes. and businesses. It's really hard, especially if you have a small business, right. to have the capability um, to make sure that you're getting the right service, your customers getting the right service when they come in, right. and that your employees are being taken care of wherever they are. And business kind of just doesn't stop, right. even though you may not be in a physical location. So that's really great to hear that there's strides being made to reach out to our local legislation and tell them, hey, this is an issue and right. we absolutely need something to be done about this. Exactly. Thank you for joining me, Courtney. I really loved our conversation today about bandwidth and I'm looking forward to talking about how networking has changed and how it's gonna affect businesses from now on. But thank you for joining us for another episode of Branching Out with FNM.